Being able to iterate through a sequence of actions is very, very important in Python, as we've discussed, and the while loop is not the only way to do it. Yes, in this episode, we're going to go ahead and discuss the for loop. Now, let's think about this for a minute. If we know exactly how many times we need to iterate through something, well, we could use the, f the while loop functionality. Sure we could. So let's take a look at that. What we would do if we know we have to do something 100 times in Python is we might create a counter variable and set it equal to its initial value and then do our while statement and do something like while our counter variable is less than 100, go ahead and do something and then increment that counter. Sure, so notice this is a way that we can do something 100 times in Python. Now, I want to remind you that pass statement, remember we covered that in an earlier video, that's just a placeholder. Sure, when we have to put some code in there, we can put the pass in there as a placeholder so that we are just testing like the loop functionality and then we're going to put the actual thing that we're going to do in place of that pass command. Okay, so with all that said, notice this works. It's a perfectly fine way to do something 100 times in Python, except we could actually do it more efficiently than this. Yes, and that's where the for loop comes in. Let's take a look at doing something 100 times with the for loop. It's going to be much easier. Notice I say for counter in range, and then I indicate what that range is. Yeah, I want to do something 100 times, so the range is 100. And notice we're going to indent whatever it is we want to do, and that's it. We're done. Yeah, look at that. So... In the previous example, we had four lines of code, and in the new example, we have two lines of code. Yeah, so the for loop is a very powerful consideration for us when we know exactly how many times we want to do something. Now, let's talk about the range option in a bit more detail. So let's look at this simple little example I've cooked up for us here. For counter in range 10, print the counter is at, and then print the counter, and then thanks for watching when we're all done with our loop. So what we're going to learn from this is how the range actually works. Let's go ahead and run this and notice. So we set a range of 10. Notice what happens. It starts at zero and it ends at nine. Yeah, so we do get 10 occurrences. It's just zero through nine. Now, there's something else you need to be aware of with the range. And that is we can do two or three arguments in here. So one of the things you can do is give the starting unit. So here I'm saying for counter in range two comma 10. So what I'm expecting to see is we start at two this time and end at nine. Let's save it and let's go ahead and run it and see if it works as we suspect. Look at that, it does. So this time we start at two and we end at nine. Finally, something else that you can do with the range option is you can give a third parameter and that is the increment. So I'm going to say, uh, let's start at two. Let's end actually at 11 and let's use two as the increment. So what should we see here? We should see two, four, six, eight, ten. So let's go ahead and save it and run it and see if we are correct. Look at that, two, four, six, eight, ten. So the for loop is going to be very, very powerful when we know exactly how many times we want to iterate through something. This is a very powerful option. And we took a look at the range options that you can utilize in conjunction with 
R4 loop. Thank you so much for watching.